story, a bigger story about what it means to be a human being. We need a story about the presence and place of our species within the whole span of existence and within the whole community of life on Earth. A story that's big enough to give us a sense of belonging and expansive purpose. A story that can encompass our individual life projects and the project of life itself um, in a non-competitive, collaborative way. Welcome to the first of three steps to go deep green. This step is about reinterpreting the story of human being. In this step, we'll tap into a great gift of this particular moment in history. We're the first generation to know what science and technology can now make possible to know about the formation of the universe and the evolution of life. It's a massive story. Wonderfully expansive stories about what it means to be a human being, these have always been with us. Think of stories of interrelationship with land and sea and sky and other species told for millennia by indigenous cultures. Or stories of the inherent interconnectedness of life told by women and others from the underside of history. And stories of interbeing told throughout the centuries in the mystical streams of the world's religions. These stories all tell of a different way of being human than the dominant story of our time. These stories tell of human beings in the midst of the whole community of life on Earth rather than apart from it or on top of it. These are stories of coexistence rather than exploitation. So what's exciting about this moment in history is that there's another story emerging out of a principal stream of that dominant culture, science. And this story complements with evidence and theory the intuitive knowing that's been here all along. Now we've got a lot of wisdom and knowledge and information to draw upon as we try to make sense and meaning of human life on Earth. You know the New Universe story from the Big Bang 13.7 billion years ago to the formation of stars and the galaxies and the Earth to the emergence of life on Earth 3.9 billion years ago to its continuing evolution and increasing complexity and the ongoing expansion of the universe as a whole. That's the big, big story. But have you thought very much about our place in the story and how meaningful it can be? Here's what um, Brian Swim and Mary Evelyn Tucker, they wrote this great book, um, Bringing the Science of It to Life in a Story. It's called Journey of the Universe. This is from that. For just as the Milky Way is the universe in the form of a galaxy, and an orchid is the universe in a form of a flower, we are the universe in the form of a human. And every time we are drawn to look up into the night sky and reflect on the awesome beauty of the universe, we are actually the universe reflecting on itself. And this changes everything. What changes? Well, I can really only say what changes for me when I enter into this bigger story. It's about my sense of place and purpose. My sense of place and purpose expands and it relaxes. So it expands to embrace the idea that I'm an expression of the universe, which in turn relaxes the drive to be something and the urge to belong to something larger than myself. I already am something. And by the fact of my existence, I belong to something larger than myself as large as all that is and was and ever shall be, in fact. I find this incredibly liberating. The New Universe story links the existence of atomic elements, and therefore all of matter, to the explosion of supernova stars. That's where it all came from. And this means everything, including me, everything is made of stardust. We are quite literally belonging to the universe. We belong to the universe in terms of our substance, in terms of what we are. We also belong to the universe in terms of our process, in terms of what we do. All life learns. It remembers, it experiments, it adapts, and we are no exception. In the human being, the universe evolved a particular aspect of this learning, this consciousness. It's symbolic and self-reflexive consciousness. 
this human capacity for responding to environments and conditions, um, in us it includes the ability to imagine and to plan and to collaborate in creating projected shared futures. It's easy to imagine that we human beings are the problem, that we're more of a blight in the universe than a belonging. And we are indeed very problematic. We've uh, seen how problematic we can be in terms of how we've disrupted the Earth's systems to the point of becoming a geological force. And we've destroyed countless life worlds to the point of initiating the sixth great extinction. But I submit that we are not inherently problematic. Our emergence as a species is either value neutral or wildly wonderful, depending on how you want to view it. I personally am quite happy to celebrate the wonder of our species as I celebrate the wonder of any species. To me, it's a matter of separating the terrific potential from the terrifying proclivities. Now, either way, whether you celebrate it or kind of neutral, the fact of our being makes us part of the ongoing evolution of the universe. And the fact of our being self-conscious means that we can choose what that participation amounts to. And I think there's tremendous purpose and meaning in this perspective. Here's what we've discussed in this video. To go deep green begins with reinterpreting the story of, pre of the presence of human beings in the universe in order to discover a sense of profoundly meaningful purpose. We are problematic as a species, but we are not a problem. We belong here. The universe has evolved in our species the capacity for self-reflexive and symbolic consciousness, and that means that we can choose a future of co-creativity with the universe itself. A future in which our own generativity becomes woven into the vibrant communities that constitute the vast symphony of the universe. That's another bit from Swim and Tucker. Now, this is a much, much bigger story than living as if ours is the only species that matters or living the folly of imagining that we're in control of something of which we're actually only a part, a powerful part, but only a part. There are some questions for you, uh, for your reflection, um, and also for your discussion with others. So I hope you enjoy those conversations uh, internally and uh, with the other participants, uh, and I'll see you in the next video.